Hello everyone. My name is Charity Jambi Muchoki. I'm a PhD student at the University of Nairobi, Kenya. I also work at the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation in Kenya. And I have a passion for indigenous leafy vegetables and how to promote them. The topic of my presentation is farmer's knowledge, attitudes and practices in the production, preservation and utilization of African leafy vegetables in Western Kenya. The authors of this paper is myself and my supervisors, JK Imungi and S.I. Shibairo. This presentation was prepared for the Power on Your Plate conference in Arusha, Tanzania, 25th to 28th January, 2021. The outline of the presentation, we have introduction, methodology and data analysis, research findings, conclusion and recommendation, and acknowledgements. When we come to the introduction, a large diversity of African leafy vegetables are grown and consumed in the western region of Kenya. But people have neglected, neglected these vegetables in favor of exotic vegetables, which were introduced much later, despite the African leafy vegetables being nutritionally superior. This neglect, coupled with widespread poverty, poor feeding habits, and over-reliance on starchy foods has ensured persistent high cases of malnutrition and micronutrient deficiencies, especially for children under five years and women. In the recent past, promotion of African leafy vegetables is being undertaken by various organizations. And uh, let us see whether this promotion has, has, has any effect. The research questions guiding this study were what knowledge, what attitudes, and what practices are undertaken in regard to promotion, preservation, and utilization of the African leafy vegetables in the Western region in Kenya. The methodology and data analysis which were used for this particular study, we had 12 gender disaggregated focus group discussions of farmers. And in each county, there were three sub-counties which were randomly selected. And these focus groups, we had for males and for females. Per day, we had only two focus group discussions. And uh, the anonymity of the participants was adhered to as no part particulars of the participants were collected and the data was analyzed using manual coding procedure for the focus group transcripts. You can see the map of the area where the data was collected. The two counties are Kakamega County and Vihiga County, which are next to each other and they are in the western region of Kenya. And Kenya is in the east side of Africa. For each of these counties, we had three sub-counties which were randomly selected. For the research findings, in regard to the knowledge in the vegetables, we can see the sources of knowledge for the farmers. 100% of the groups, they named visiting institutions, and also neighbors, friends, and relatives as their source of knowledge. And in regard to the visiting institutions, non-governmental institutions category had the highest number in both counties, as shown in the figure two below. 
and 50% of the groups. They named radio, television, internet, and social media, and also agricultural affairs as their source of knowledge. Then, in regard to the topics that are taught to the farmers by the visiting institutions, the most favorite topic which was delivered is how to grow the indigenous vegetables, as it was mentioned by 92% of the groups. And the next favorite topic was on composting, preparation of organic manure, and how to use fertilizer. This was mentioned by 58% of the groups. You can see from the figure two that the non-governmental organizations had the highest number of institutions that visited these particular counties, followed by the government ministries, departments, and agencies, and thirdly was the educational institutions like the universities and the technical institutions. And uh, below that, we had the international organizations. And the category that had the lowest, it was the private finance organizations, specifically the banks, and they were only available in Kakamega. In regard to the practices regarding indigenous, these African leafy vegetables, the groups mentioned 19 different species of vegetables that are consumed in the area, both cultivated and wild. And in regard to post harvest handling of the vegetables for the market, most of the vegetables for the market are harvested when there is no direct sunlight. This is either early in the morning or in the evening. And in regard to post harvest handling and preservation for long periods, most of the farmers were not preserving the vegetables for long periods, but a few of them mentioned that they solar dry the vegetables. And in regard to post harvest handling for home consumption, the vegetables for home consumption, they are cooked for various durations, and most of the vegetables are mixed with others when they are being cooked. When we come to the utilization, that is in terms of home consumption and selling, uh, the vegetables which have been domesticated for long, they are sold equally as much as the home consumed. But the vegetables which are wild or recently domesticated, or those which have multiple uses, like cassava and sweet potatoes, these vegetables are not sold, they're only home consumed, as you can see in the figure below. You can see 55% of the vegetables, they are just consumed, they are not sold. Then we have 30%. They sell half and they eat half. Where 10%, we have, they consume a little and they sell more. These are the ones which are basically commercial, like the Moringa. And then we have a few which they consume more, but they sell a little, like the pumpkin leaves. The mentioned African leafy vegetables are cowpea leaves. African nightshade, slender leaf, jute mallow, pumpkin leaves, spider plant, leaf amaranth, African kale, vine spinach, bean leaves, cassava leaves, sweet potato leaves, black jack, pepper leaves, moringa, wandering dew, and we have three which you could not get the English names. These are Shirietso, Murunde, and Imbetsa. And for these three, we could not get the scientific name of two of them. Now, in regard to the attitudes which these people have regarding these vegetables, they are veg most of these vegetables are consumed by all members of the family. But they mentioned that in vegetables which are encouraged for specific individuals 
during specific times and they believe these have health benefits. Where else? They also mentioned 12 different vegetables which are discouraged for specific individuals and for specific times, but mostly because of myths or some people do not know how to prepare these vegetables, especially the young people. Now, when you come to the conclusion and recommendation, the attitudes and practices on post-service handling, preservation and utilization is greatly influenced by the culture. But their knowledge in these vegetables is changing because they are getting information from many sources and many of these sources are very reliable. And uh, what can be recommended is that such training should continue and they are needed and the infrastructural support is required to ensure that the locals in this region can be able to produce these vegetables and be able to utilize them the way it is required. And this will go a long way in ensuring the reduction in micronutrient deficiencies. For this particular study, we need to acknowledge the GIZ and the World Vegetable Center for funding this study. The Kakamega and the Viga County Administration are also acknowledged for allowing the study to be undertaken. And also the farmer groups which participated in the focus groups, they are acknowledged. Thank you. The organizers for this particular conference are acknowledged for giving me an opportunity to present in this conference. Thank you.